Hey everybody, Matumbo here. Welcome back to the channel. And today we are playing some more Historic here on Magic Arena. And today, again, we are going to revisit a deck we played a long time ago, make some few changes to it, and see if this deck is still um, a force to be reckoned with. Um, but real quick though, before we hop into today's deck, as always, would like to remind everybody, if you enjoy the channel and the video, please like, comment, subscribe, and check out all those cool links down below. Uh, any of those things that you can do, do uh, they do help the channel grow. Um, and so anything you could do would be amazing of you. So let's just hop right into today's deck, and we are calling it One Humanity, and we are playing Humans again. So uh, Humans is a deck that first really became uh, popular in Modern, um, but with the introduction of a ton of new cards, uh, you know, on Arena, and, you know, especially with the introduction of Ancient Ziggurat in one of the uh, anthology sets, um, Decks like this, these four color decks, uh, especially creature based decks, are actually going to be a little easier for us to play and navigate because we're going to have access to the correct mana. So, um, again, four color decks usually are hard to play, but with the right mana base, they do get a little bit easier. So, Ancient Ziggurats, uh, add one many, many color, spend this mana only to cast a creature spell, and then unclaim territory. Uh, when it comes into battlefield, choose a creature type, which we're going to usually choose humans. And it's going to say, add one one mana of any color, spend it only to cast creature spell of the chosen type. So we are playing all creatures. Um, we have a bunch of, you know, fetch land, not fetch lands. We have a bunch of shock lands, some check lands, a couple pathways, uh, one castle Arden Veil because it does make some humans. But really, um, let's just go down each of these and what they really do and what they bring to the table. Uh, first off, we are playing Umori as a companion since we are playing all creatures in the deck. This is just a free card to play. Um, the only downside to playing a card like Umori as your companion is it does limit your deck. So again, for Umori to be a companion, you can only be playing non-land cards that share a card type. So since we're playing creatures, we can't play anything else if we want this as our companion. And then also when we do play this specific companion, it really does give our opponent a lot of information and they're going to know we're not really going to be able to respond to anything that they're doing on their side of the board or, you know, during their turn, stuff like that. So it is one of those things that you really have to, you know, decide on whether or not you want to play Umori. So this deck really can be played without playing Umori. Um, we're playing this in here just to, so we don't get the flack from everybody, but this deck is fine to play without Umori as your companion. That way your opponent doesn't know you don't have interaction spells. Cause sometimes you could, you might want to play the, um, the dire removal spell that actually allows you to, um, remove a creature from the board. Uh, and then, you know, as long as you have a human to play, don't really remember the name of it, but uh, but yeah, let's just uh, kind of go through the creatures. Uh, four copies of Dauntless Bodyguard, uh, two mana. I'm sorry, one mana, two, one. It's our one drop in the deck. This basically gets to protect a creature when it comes into play. So if we want to use this ability, we do want to make sure that we play this after we have another creature in play. That way we can target that creature with its ability. And then we can sacrifice it to give a creature indestructible until end of turn. We have three copies of Thalia. This is going to be really good against spell-based decks. Um, you know, we have our storm-based decks. Uh, we have our ramp-based decks. It's going to slow them down just a little bit. Uh, and then this is also really good against control decks because it's going to put them off of their counter spell mana. It's going to put them off their mass removal, their Wrath of God mana. Um, so three copies of this should be fine. Uh, and again, uh, first strike is nothing to laugh at because sometimes first strike is really all you need uh, to push your deck over the edge. Uh, four copies of Kite Cell Freebooter, really the same thing. Uh, Spell-based decks is going to be really good against. We're going to be able to remove targeted removal, mass removal, uh, burn, draw, you know, planeswalkers, just really good uh, way to interact with our opponent. Four copies of Meddling Mage, this is really good because this will, potentially we can name a card, our opponents will never be able to play with it again. It's really also good if we have a way to protect it, like with Dauntless Bodyguard, but this is also really good uh, in combination with Kite Cell Freebooter, we can take a look at their hand and then we can say, oh, well, we don't want them to play five mana to fairy or Wrath of God or something along those lines. And then they, they just can't do it at that point. And then we have uh, four copies of Generals Enforcer. So this card is actually going to be good for a few different reasons. Uh, it's going to give us a little bit of a late game, you know, if we're able to, um, you know, kill some of their creatures off or if they are, if they're killing some of ours, we can actually basically pay for mana, exile another creature from any graveyard um, 
and then we can uh, make a 1-1 one, one, uh, human out of that. Uh, also, this is going to be good for getting rid of cards in the graveyard that we don't want them to be bringing back, you know, cards like Croxa, Uro, uh, you know, any really kind of escape cards are going to be really good targets with this. We're going to slow down um, maybe a Search for Escanta. You know, there's just a, a bunch of different cards that we could potentially neutralize with this four man ability. And then on top of that, legendary humans we control have indestructible. So cards like Thalia, uh, General Kudro that we'll get to in a second, Judith and Tajik, um, they're gonna be indestructible when this is in play. And this is a non-legendary, um, a two, three for two mana is really nothing to shy away from. So really. Uh, three copies of Benelish Marshall. Uh, again, I really feel like since all of our lands make white mana, uh, we should have no problems casting the Benelish Marshall. And so, uh, all other creatures we control get plus one, plus one. Should be pretty strong. Four copies of Deputy Detention. Now, this is going to be the one uh, exception in our deck. So this is a creature. However, it's not a human. Um, something that we'll, we'll need to remember. Um, but <clears throat> with this being a, a Vidalcan Wizard and not a human, uh, we can't really um, name human with unclaimed territory. We'll have to rely on drawing one of our four Hollowed Fountains or... You know one of our ancient ziggurats or if we have an extra unclaimed territory actually naming wizard with this so um, however though this is a great creature it's really good uh, we're going to be able to exile target non-land permanent and opponent controls and all other non-land permanents that player controls with the same name this is good against uh tokens cre just creatures in multiples um you know enchantments in multiples just really really good removal spell uh, four copies of General Kudro. So we're playing four of this legendary, this mythic legendary, because of the fact that it's a lord. Uh, other humans get plus one, plus one. That's really huge. It's only three mana. Uh, it's actually a little bit easier to play out probably than Benelish Marshall because of the one white, one black, and then one colorless. Whenever it enters the battlefield or any other creature enters, the, uh, any other human enters the battlefield, um, we actually get to start exiling cards from our graveyard. So again, another way to deal with Uro, Croxa, and all those Crazy graveyard based cards. Uh, and then if we really need to, if we have a bunch of, maybe we have a bunch of tokens from the general's enforcer or just other ways, we can actually sacrifice two humans to destroy a target creature with power four or greater. So this is going to be able to get those really big threats off the board for our opponent. And then we just have a few uh, two ofs that we're playing. Two copies of Judith gives our creatures plus one plus zero, and it makes it so when our creatures die, we get to start pinging. So if they start, you know, wrathing or targeted removal, we're going to actually punish them for actually doing that. Tajik's great. It's a three mana, uh, three two haster. It's got mentor, uh, car, uh, an ability that people often forget about. Whenever it attacks, we get to put a counter on a target attacking creature with lesser power, uh, and then we do get to give creatures, or we do get to give him first strike, and then he has a really crazy random ability that says prevent all non combat damage that would be dealt to other creatures you control. So this would stop stuff like deafening clarion, storm's wrath, uh, stuff like that from killing your other creatures it would still kill Tajik but um, would save your other creatures and then just two copies of hostage taker hostage taker is a great car it's a lot of fun uh, we could steal artifacts or creatures uh, when they hit play um, when, or whenever we cast the hostage taker and then we could just really use our opponent's creatures or artifacts against them so that is going to be the deck we're wrapping it off like I said with 24 lands a bunch of non-basic lands that just uh, you know help our color base go a lot easier and again you can do this with or without Umori, so it's really up to you. But that is the deck. Let's hop into the gameplay, and we will see you guys soon. All right, time for some humans in Historic. Let's do this one humanity deck. Try to work together and put people away. That is what we're doing, right? We have to look at it as the the opponents are the evil in the world. Alright, well. What is our opponent going to be getting into? Mono blue? I don't know what we play here, right? I think we... I think we just try to do this. They're gonna be like, oh, what do they name? And I think we just name a counter spell. And even if this gets a counter spell, we're fine, right? They might let this resolve because 
They might be thinking, oh, okay, that's fine. Got them off a of counterspell. Wow. Main phase cycling for land, probably. So this is pro this okay. This is this is probably not an aggro deck. This is probably just a let's upset our opponent and play all the counter spells deck. You got one mana, my friend. Opt now or opt at the end of the turn. It's all the same. It is all the same. Hello. Let's do the thing. Yep, yep. Ropey McRoperson. Ooh, it's actually a pretty decent draw, right? Um, I think I'd rather just get down the big 3-3. Three, three. This could come down next turn, potentially. Uh, let's get rid of that. Oh. So this is the aggro deck, but with all the counter spells? Okay. So you're getting you're getting in for one because you're not gonna be blocking. All right, I'm gonna attack first before we do anything. I do wish our opponent was playing a little bit faster. Oh, okay. Now, how do I want to do this now? I guess we are just going to just play like we were going to play, right? I really wanted to get in our attack for three. Oh, you're playing Simic Flash? Really? So they have a Coco in their hand? I'll use your Coco now. You have to assume they have a collected company, right? Um, really want to get this down before they get access to double green, or they potentially start having uh, frilled mystics and wolves. Okay. Really wish we had a another threat that we could back this up with. Really wish we had another threat there. Well, don't hate that. We're just going to keep attacking. Okay. I mean, they're gonna have to cast something else. Maybe they play another one. No, Grow Spiral. Okay. So they're completely tapped out now, which is really good. So we do get to.
They might try to trade for... Okay. So I guess the best course of action at this point is to really want to utilize our mana, but I don't think spending four mana to hostage take our opponent's Spectral Sailor this turn is the best course of action, so I do think that getting this down is probably best. And if their opponent's playing Uro, um, this General Kudro is actually going to be doing some work. So you do know that they have to be on a wolf here. I'm assuming. So if we were to play this. This doesn't get to mentor anything. This doesn't really get to do anything. So yeah, we're just going to swing in. If they wolf, it's fine. If they wolf, they probably block the marshal. They know all of the cards in our deck are creatures and lands, which is kind of unfortunate. That's part of the reason I don't like playing Uro, is because it gives away our game plan. Oh, so they went to blocks already? They're going to bounce something. So they... What? They have two of them? That's pretty spectacular if you have... Oh, okay, that's fine. That's fine. I mean, I think we're just going to utilize this. Yeah, I don't think we really want the Spectral Sailor there. It does guarantee us value, but now we actually get to bounce. Right, we can send our Brazen Borrower on an adventure. Alright, only a couple cards in the graveyard. Not too worried about it. They're tapping out for Grow Spiral. Yeah, this should be the beginning of the end for our opponent here. You get to play another one. So best course of action is to... Oh, it actually does get to Mentor. Alright, what you blocking? Gotta block one of them. Gotta block one of them. Alright, I think uh, I think humans are doing pretty good against the bad Simic uh, Flash draw. This is a good way to open up this video, right? Being a bunch of powerful, powerful humans in play. And does our opponent play the old rope card? Oh, okay. Still only three cards in their in their graveyard. Okay, up to eight. Eight is still not going to cut it, so we're going to be swinging for 18. Spectral Sailor. All right. All right, let's do it to it.
All the damage. Roosley. Well, good game. Sorry I had a bad draw, but Simic Flash is one of those decks that we just don't like playing against, and we just uh, took you, took your draw and took advantage of that, so. All right, next game. All right. Game two. We're doing it. Let's hydrate. Oh, man. Oh, we get to go first. I like this hand. I like this hand. What kind of deck are they going to play? Well, we definitely need blue mana for this hand to really work. Are they on elves? Are they on Jun sacrifice? Oh, we really need we really need some help. Holy Holy similar deck to ours opponent. Play this uh Okay, well that's a little unfortunate, right? Let me make sure before I do this, non basic lands, enter the battlefield tapped, okay. Eh. No attacks. Well, we are gonna have all of our lands under the battlefield tap, so we are playing a turn behind. Yeah, I was about to say, I imagine they play a Knight of Autumn. Alright, they're getting in. No blocks. Alright, well that is coming into play tapped. Um... Do we care? That is the question. No, we'll just bounce. We'll bounce these off each other, right? Next turn, we actually get to hostage take or something potentially good. Or we get deputy detention. I'm gonna imagine our opponent's probably gonna play that ooze, right? It's probably the only card they can play. Oh, okay. Love struck beast. It's actually a pretty good target. Is this a human? Is a human, so we can't attack with any fives. So. Or we're just gonna bounce these off each other. All right, opponent, Are you gonna play a news? We're about to have a crazy weird stalemate going on here. What's really gonna be really cool is when they're finally able to cast that marshal and then we hostage taker it. That's really what we want. All right, really need them to do something. Do we say hello? Did they leave? Hello. There we go. All right, well, that comes into play tapped. Could get the Ori. Mori doesn't do a lot, right? Mori is just a big creature. No attacks. Oh, well, that's unfortunate. Well, fine. Jerk. I think we do block there. Hmm. 
<laughs> We're gonna get a three three. <laughs> This is an interesting game, right? Don't really think the ooze does anything. Not really worried about it. Your thing. Still not worried about an ooze. I'm more worried about this two, three flyer than anything. And this probably doesn't do anything. I guess we get rid of the Ameria, right? Well, they can only play one spell a turn. Or is it... Hold on. Player. Yeah, I think this is what we're going to have to do, right? Skyclave Apparition. No, uh -oh. we had to follow. We're not even streaming. All right. So let's get rid of this Archon. Archon into Deputy. Seems okay. Oh! They conceded. Okay. GG. Alright, not sure about not sure about the, that concession, but you never know. They might have just, you know. I guess they had to have thought that they that they couldn't have they couldn't have won there. But hey. Uh, props to uh, remains the same for uh, subbing to our Twitch page while we were playing. So, right. Well, opponent goes first. I think we have to keep this right. This hand could be really powerful if we can live. Play this out. And then I think, right, I think we have to, uh, let's see what we draw before we start assuming what we have to do. Oh, uh, that was the land we wanted, right? It sure was. All right, well, <clears throat> well let's get Thalia down. Thalia blocks Robber, but they probably have Stomp. They always have Stomp. Or maybe they just have fight spell and they just get us real good. No, nope, they have stomp. Yep. Oh, land again. Okay, well. We are going to play... I guess it really doesn't matter, to be 100% honest with you. What's really going to matter is the Ember Cleave, right? Oh, 
So the good news is we get to borrow that. Do we attack? They want to trade? I think we're fine with that. They trade both of those? That might be worth it to them, right? I don't actually hate that trade because of the fact we have two more lords in our hand. And we have a questing beast potential. Which is something that we should probably never have potential to cast, but... Hey, hostage shaker's a thing, right? We still just have to really be worried about Ember Cleave. All right, I think with them casting things here, we probably don't have to worry about Ember Cleave. Oh, let's see. Well, no, they only have one red, so. So they have a stomp. One card in their hand is a stomp, right? We're at four though. So now they have to decide. It's actually pretty good. It's a pretty good hit right there. So now we have to decide. What is the best use of our mana? I think this is just the best use of our mana, right? Playing a 5-5. Five, five. Now we don't care about a potential stomp. Um, so that's lethal now. Yeah, because they drew because they drew a haste card. Ugh, because they drew a haste card. I guess if we would have played this. No, we would have taken damage at the same time. We would have needed like some kind of like first game. Good game. I want to die to my own thing. It's, it's like we win, right? If we die to our own Dauntless Bodyguard, we win. We're at one. Then they stomp us like we know they have it. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. Yep, 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 yep. Oh, they drew that haster. That's unfortunate. Hey. But well, we did we did predict accurately that they had a stomp on their hand, so. Alright, good game. Alright, on to this next one. It is disappointing. I do feel like I mean we were probably dead to a few draws besides just the haster. But Embercleave probably got us really good. Yeah. Uh, we're playing off curve. We have to mulligan this. This is the exact same hand almost, right? Um, so we're going to keep and put back one of these guys. We are going to take a look at our opponent's hand and see what they're doing. Tyranny, LOL. I guess best case scenario, we get a Coco. Uh, this is pr pretty good to get. Um, that's pretty good as well. So I think we just run this out. They can't play Nissa next turn. We do get to start getting in damage. And uh, we're just going to meddling mage Nissa. Oh, this is, this is Nissa who shakes the world. Oh, this is going to be a really good turn, right? Doesn't matter. 
Does it matter? I don't think it matters. Nissa, who shakes the world. And indestructible. Yeah, let's get in. Seems pretty good. Deputy's gonna really finish this off, right? Steel Leaf Champion. Okay. I guess we were gonna go after the Merfolk Branch Walkers, but instead. Instead. Oh, yeah. Tyranny. LOL. Yeah. That was. That was a strong showing for this human's deck. Oh, strong sh showing for all of humanity. All right, next game. Next game. Conquer and move on, right? Force, pitch, force. Opponent goes first. This has potential. Oh. Brutal. Brutal, brutal, brutal. Well. Let's do it to it. Oh. Don't you dare. Gifted Aetherborn, really? Human, human, human. I think we we're gonna name Phyrexian Obliterator. It actually hovers over the card. Nice. Nice, nice, nice. Um, let me get rid of the fatal push. Sure. Um, we won't play that. I do think uh, Obliterator was the right name here. Okay, Murder Rider. Thalia is pretty good. I feel like this is pretty good too, right? Um, no attacks. No attacks. We're going to do our work with Thalia, I think. Right? I mean, they could easily store up two removal spells to deal with something. That's pretty good. We'll start in with the beats next turn, right? Oh, fatal. Okay. Sounds good. Sounds good. It was good that we actually got them to use a removal spell. Um. 
yep, we're going to play this. We're just going to hope that we can dodge a discard spell for one more turn. And then next turn, we just get in with a massive attack. I don't think we're going to attack with the uh, Bendelish Marshals at all. I do wish we had another bodyguard to, to uh, follow this up with. Yeah, if they want to kill the deputy and then make all the trades, it's fine. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. So they drew three fatal pushes. It's kind of ridiculous. Kind of ridiculous. But on the plus side, we still have these two cards. And I think... God, they have a, they have a reanimation spell? Oh, so they're just drawing all the cards in triplicate. Remember, I still think that this is correct. I still think... Still think naming Obliterator is correct here. Okay. And... Do we? Or do we? Yeah. They don't have any removal in their hand. I guarantee that last card is an Obliterator. Rather save this hostage taker for something. Oh, they drew. They drew all four of those. That's pretty amazing. That's pretty amazing. Didn't want to do a crazy attack there. Ooh, force pitch force. That was a good game. Good good back and forth there. I really wish I could have seen your hand. And if you happen to watch my channel, please comment. Let me know if you had obliterators in your hand. All right, next game. All right. Next game. Yeah, I just... I don't think that mono black especially a, a mono black deck that looks like a mono black devotion deck is not going to pl be playing phyrexian obliterator and i do feel like phyrexian obliterator is probably our worst card to deal with so because we only have two hostage takers right um we go first we go first okay i'm gonna keep this for our one of castle a little awkward but we get to make things indestructible. Say hello. Undercovered. Literally, hello from the other side of the table. Why does it take some opponents so long to get to the game? We will show you our Castle Art and Veil. Then we will play our Grim Climb Pathway. Ooh. So if they are on a control deck, this is going to 
potentially get them pretty good. So if we were to meddling mage, what would we meddling mage? Narset? Or Wrath of God, maybe? Oh, well. Yeah, should have played that. Uh, I guess it doesn't matter. We wouldn't have been able to play the meddling mage. Oh, so they're not even playing a... Uh, Not even playing what we thought. So we could get this, and then we can semi protect the uh, meddling mage. How did Jeskai control build? Shivan Fire is a weird card to see. Sahili. Okay. Sahili, huh? Hmm. <laughs> Let's attack. I, will not give up. I mean, we're definitely gonna definitely call creatures, right? Yeah, I didn't want them to like shiv and fire our meddling mage and then block with their one one if they would have done that. So that would have got us pretty good. Still, um. I mean, I, I guess we keep this? Right, it's gonna die anyway. So, so they get the token first and the token dies. Fibble thip, okay. Um. This is actually a pretty good draw, right? Yep, Narset would have been a good one to get. Search for his Kanta. How many cards do they have? Two. Don't really care about Spell Pierce at all, right? So... You are a mighty warrior. I concede. Yep. Just do it to it. Oh, I'll craft something special for you. Just force out all of the creatures. So they have to draw another deafening clarion. Or 11. We can put them at 1 if we draw um, a blue source that we can use on Deputy Detention. See, it's not a human, right? Um, okay. They could potentially hit our Freebooter and get another Narset, which is fine. <laughs> Really just want a blue mana source. Well, we we get to make a 1-1 one, one from a Fibblethip. 
Remember, Wrath of God is a dead card. Oh, that's a pretty good card. That's a pretty good card. What do they value more? Oh, they value Sahili more. Okay, we're going to definitely go after Sahili. Um, sure. I don't really think it matters, right? I wonder if it would have been worth it just to push damage to their face. Yep. Okay. That's fine. We're not getting any copying happening. Um, we do get to make another 1-1, one, one, which is good. Again, not too concerned with 1-1 one, one tokens. They're not really doing anything. Remember, all we need is a blue source, and we are good. We hit for 10. What's the right play here, right? Do we... Do we make a token? I think we do. Oh, deck. So now they have to put something in their graveyard. This is a lot of damage, right? So hold on. Let's let's think about this through. The most they're gonna get there. Yeah, I think we just go face. I think we just go face. So yeah, they're still going to take eight here. And... So they're going to have to... Okay, I was about to say, they're going to have to mill. They're going digging. Right, so I mean, what do they go digging for here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't think they should have gone digging. I think they should have just cast their, they cast their Sarkin. They get a token. They make a token. Um, four. Yeah, I guess they didn't really have enough. Either way, good game, good game. Final boss time. Let's do it to it. Final boss. 
Now I need that echo. Final, final boss, 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 boss. That crazy, like, orchestra hall reverb. Empress Jada. Interesting, we have an Empress as the final boss, and we get to go first. I like it. I like it. I think we do... I think we do have to run this out. I, I feel like our opponent's on a colorless deck. Oh, completely wrong. Scorch Spitter, though. Scorch Spitter. Uh, the old human. You gonna make a trade? Let's do it. No trades, huh? Okay. Maybe they're gonna waste their turn playing a mountain and shocking Orthalia. Oh no. No. Okay. We can try to race you. Would be pretty sick to be able to play this next turn and then just start getting in. Just gonna hover over it like I don't know what it does. Sure thing. Oh, no attacks. They're gonna they're gonna go for the big swing, right? Oh. Oh, this makes... See, Benelish Marshall makes this really interesting. <sighs> that makes it so they probably have to block, right? Yeah, I think, I think we're just going to go for it, right? I think it's better to play this, right? Okay. Um, so we could sack this Dallas bodyguard to deal a damage to the Scorch Spitter, which we might do depending on on what they play. So like let's let's say they play their Torbrand or whatever it's called. I'm gonna sack I'm gonna sack this bodyguard to the torch spitter. Um hmm. Mm -hmm -hmm. Yep, now what? Now what do you do? Oh, they're just going. So these have double strike, right? So eight, sixteen. Yeah, we have to block. I'll deal a damage here. We're at four. Yeah, good game, Jada. Good game. Whew. Race the burn deck, right? Race the burn deck. All right, everybody. Well, welcome to the wrap-up. And we killed it. I mean, we went six and one with this deck. 
However, um, you know, one of those games our opponent did kind of concede. I felt like maybe a little prematurely. Um, it was kind of late into the game, but I, I don't really feel like I know I wouldn't have con conceded in that position. Um, however, you know, we don't know what their full hand was. I don't I don't think we knew fully what they had. We knew they had a Benelish Marshall in their hand, but uh, yeah. I feel like everything really played a really key um, role in our games. You know, we were able to hostage take her some cool things. We were able to um, deputy some things. We were able to pump our creatures with generals um, and marshals. And Tajik got in there. Judith got in there, dealt some damage, especially that one game against the uh, the mono red deck there that we just had. Um, you know, prevented that extra lethal damage from um, that one one. And then you know, making their creatures double striking with even more damage and uh yeah uh, meddling mage again was really good i really feel like i still feel like that game against the mono black deck uh naming phyrexian obliterator was the right call uh and then yeah i think maybe the weakest card in the deck might be the kite sail freebooters um but again you know i i can't really say that because they still served a purpose at one point um so everything Everything I really feel like just was evened out. I don't really think there was a really don't think there was a star player in our deck, really at all. Definitely not Umori. You know, again, uh, Umori never really made an impact on her game. I don't really feel like it came into play. I think one time, and on top of that, it just I feel like it just gives our opponent too much information, and I would rather them not have that information and not play Umori, and then possibly be able to um, play a few removal spells. So, um, but yeah, that, that's the deck. Um, and we did definitely forget, uh, deputy detention, not being a human while we're playing, I think one of those games. So, and we even talked about that during our, during introduction. So it happens, but yeah, again, if you enjoy the video, you enjoy the deck, please like comment, subscribe, check out all the cool links down below the Patreon, the discord and the Twitch link. So anything you can do in regards to interacting with the channel helps the channel grow immensely. So I really hope everybody is staying safe. And, uh, you know, let us just know in the comments below what you want to see in the next video. But stay safe. We will see you next time. Remember, this channel would not exist without such amazing viewers and subscribers. Thank you so much for interacting with the channel and helping grow the community. And a very big special thank you to the Patreons listed here for supporting the channel.